Hey everybody, it's Mike from Order Flows and welcome to this special training video on the Order Flows Flow Driver. Now in this presentation, I'll be talking about the settings, the general settings and the effect that they have on the indicator. I'll be talking about which trades to take and I'll jump into you know the different markets and what sort of settings you want to be using for them. All right, so just uh, bear with me and let me get my screen up, my trading screen. Make sure I got the right screen. Here we go. Okay, so this is a normal footprint chart, and the flow driver is added on. You can see there's uh, red down triangles for sells, and you have blue up triangles for buys. Now, you don't have to use a footprint chart for this indicator. You can use a normal um, bar chart. I'll be flipping between footprint charts and bar charts. Sometimes it's a little, I could show a bit more on a um, bar chart than I can on a footprint chart in terms of screen space. But in the settings, okay, so you can adjust the color of the up and down um, triangle, you know, for the buy signals, the sell signals, by going under the plots. You can see it right here. I'd say you don't like blue, um, you know, you can change it to whatever color, cyan, teal, whatever. Uh, you don't like red, for cells, you can change it to whatever color, you know, magenta or, or whatever. But, you know, in general, blue means buy, red means sell in trading. And you can even make the size of the triangle bigger. You, I use 8, but, you know, if you want it really big, you could use something like uh, 15 or 16. Um, if you want it smaller, you can make it smaller. But, you know, 8, I find, is, is good enough for me on my eyes. All right, so after you enter your license token in here, the settings the main settings are, are found right under the part that says settings now there's the swing filter which you can enable or disable right right now I have it on this chart as disabled right to enable it I would click on that little box there and here you see swing period right the next one right below it all right so it's set at one so if I have this enabled whatever value I put in here right starting at one you're not going to enable it and put it at zero because you just disable it, right? If you have swing period set to zero, then it's not going to use it. And, you you know, don't do that. Just disable it if you don't want to use it. Now, you could use a period of like one, two, three, four, five, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know some people use a very high swing period, okay? They, they use it all the way up to um, 50, but then it's going to depend on their strength and all. So, you know, I find either some markets I prefer to disable it and see all the signals. Um, or I use a swing period of one to th or three or five or nine. Um, it really depends on you and the market you're trading and how many signals you want to see um, on your chart, basically. And I'll tell you what, let me pull up a chart here. Okay, so this is Ultra Bonds. All right, so I will just show you the, the differences it's going to make so here i got swing filter disabled right it's unchecked but if i check it and set it to one okay some of these signals might not appear anymore let me just make this a little smaller okay so um this one won't this one won't this one won't so click apply let it work Okay, so you see just one signal there, right? All the others disappeared. Um, disable it, and it's basically, you know, I like using no swing filter on markets where I like to scalp trades, basically. You know, things like um, some of the grain markets and ultra bonds, bonds. Uh, I'm looking for many signals in those markets. I have the balance and balance strength set to pretty low levels. All right, so. Let's take a look at um, a different example here. This is E minis. Okay. Well, let's get the current day. Where are we here? Um, if, I'll tell you what, let me change it to something a bit more uh, volatile. Change it to NQ. Now, I'm going to take a look at the settings real quick uh, as far as the strength. But when, you, when you're on a more volatile market, if you set the strengths 
kind of weak, you know, kind of loose in a sense, then you're going to get a lot of signals, okay? And the reason being is because that's due to the volatility in the market, right? You know, a market like NASDAQ not only has a lot of volatility, but part of the reason you got a lot of volatility is because the the market doesn't have that same liquidity that the more uh, deeper markets like YES has, right? Like the E-minis have. And that's going to affect basically the way the indicator finds trades, right? Because if, in other words, right? Because remember, right? This is reading the order flow. So it's, it's based on um, volume that's traded as well as overall volume that's being traded, right? So it's taking it in relationship. So if you've got weaker volume, then weaker volume internally in the bar, you, and you set the the strength pretty low, it's going to give you a lot of signals. So you can see here, right? There's a lot of signals, right? And people would be like scratching their head, you know, Jesus, this is, this is stupid. You know, it's like every other, well, not every other bar, but every, you know, couple minutes there, there's a signal, right? And that's due to having a low setting. I, I know it's low on this one. Uh, sorry. Um, and I know it's, this one is set to average. Before on the E mini chart, I had it set to zero. But if I had, so example, if I had it set to zero, right, balance disabled, there's going to be a lot more signals, right? And even, you know, two is about average on the strength here. You know, minimum is one, right? Maximum is three. So it's right in the middle on balance strength. But if I turn off the balance, basically, I, you know, one would be the lowest. If it's turned on, zero would be disabled. There's going to be a lot more signals. You know, even if I change the balance strength to one as well, all right, there'll, there'll be a lot more signals. But let's let's let this come up first, and then I'll I'll talk about it. Let's give it a second here. Whoops, close that down. This doesn't get in the way. But you know the default I believe is two and two, which is you know basically the midpoint on a lot but when you set the balance to zero basically disable it that's about as weak as it can get on the balance now if you're going to set on a market that's volatile like nasdaq right if you're going to set the balance at a low number the actual balance strength you're going to want to set it at a higher number so you see there's a lot more signals here so one of the ways that you can filter out is by using a swing filter okay and if i change it to one which is just the the bare minimum one, right? Zero or disable it would be no swing filter. Um, setting it to a swing filter with the one is, is the minimum. Now I could later, after this comes up, I just want you to sh show you the difference um, with between one and zero, right? We saw a lot of signals there, but now I'm going to change it to one and it's going to clean it up a lot because it's looking for basically at a setting of one, it's looking for bars where the market is seems to be turning a little bit at a bare minimum. So you can see here, right? You got a sell here, a buy, a buy, a buy, a sell, a sell, a sell. Okay. So before you had a lot more signals, now you've got less. Now that's a setting of one. Now you could expand it a bit. Say you don't want to use one. Say you want to use, you know, sort of a, a longer period, five. You know, I, I like one, three, five, and nine. That, that's me. But in, depending on the market. Okay, of course, um, you know, some markets that don't move a lot, I, I wouldn't use a, a particular swing filter um, just because, you know, it, it's it's not really going to have much effect on it. Um, I don't know how to, how to phrase it. It's, it's one of those things where you have to know how your market trades. You have to understand how your market trades so that... You know, you could take advantage of when the market is actually turning or not. Okay. So here, right now it's set to five and you only got two signals. Okay. Now, if I set, you know, if I start, were to start changing the balance on these things, it's going to also affect the amount of signals I get. So I'll just uncheck that. I'll just put this back at the defaults two and two and just sort of go through the other um, settings here. So delta analysis. Okay, what that means is if you want to use delta in the market analysis. So basically, if you enable it, 
okay, a bar is going to have to have positive delta if it's an up bar or negative delta if it's a down bar. Because, you know, sometimes there are bars that have positive delta that are red bars, right, that are going down. And, and why is that? Why do they have positive delta if the market is going down? Is because you have aggressive buyers buying the offer, buying it from, you know, the passive traders there, but the passive traders have a lot of supply, okay? And, you know, that means one thing in the market. That means that there's, you know, re resistance in the market, basically, because, you know, people, you know, what causes resistance, right? What causes a market to go up and hit resistance? Well, resistance occurs when there's a lot of supply in the market, right? Because it's, it's going up, but then people, sellers come in and offer it out, okay? So here, right, this is with delta analysis turned off, I'll turn it on, there's going to be not a lot less. There's going to be generally a, a few less signals. I mean, that generally on up candles, you have positive delta. On down candles, you have negative delta. But once in a while, like I said, you get the opposite. Okay, and it actually has a, a, a negative, not a negative meaning, but it's got a different meaning in the order flow. Okay, you know, you, you don't want to be buying into supply, all right, or selling into support. Right, you want to be doing the opposite. So that's what the delta analysis tool or filter rather tool um, is for. Okay, and as I said, it's it's going to filter out a few signals, not a whole heck of a lot, but just a few. Um, so you can see here, it's just slightly less. All right, there's a nice or a nice move here from you know the eighty twos all the way up into the double O's here. It's a nice move. This is the overnight session, by the way. I just used this because this was what was on my chart. Um, all right, so that's the delta analysis turned on. It's up to you if you want to use it. Now, tight markets. Okay, tight markets, you could enable it or disable it. And basically what it's for, when, it, when I was first using this form of analysis on order flow, um, you know, when, when you start looking at markets, let me just get a market up here for example um treasuries of five years okay we'll take a look at fives fives and um you know bonds 10 years they tend to have very tight bars you know tight ranges you know here trading just the bid and the offer trading the bid and the offer it's what i call a tight market because it's, it's basically it's the bid and offer and there's big size up right if you were to look at 10 years, um, you know, it, it's very, it's probably even tighter because, you know, 10 years is like six, six and a half thousand up. But then behind it is 5,000, you know, on the next bid, another 5,000 on the offer, um, 10,000 above it, 10,000 below it, like that. You know, it's very liquid. Um, so, and as a result of that liquidity, it, you don't get necessarily the same price movements that you would get in, say, crude oil, right? Or, E minis. Now, if I was trading a market like this, you know, this was a, a filter that we put on um, specifically for these these markets like this. And if you disable it, right, then you're, you're probably not going to get any signals in the um, in the treasury markets, you know, or bonds even, you know, the ten years in Germany. And you know, we sort of went back and forth and just you know, should we just make it fully enabled or not but you know we just we had it as a filter in there um for you know for people that trade the night session and then want to trade the day session right if because if, honestly if you're trading something like nq at night you know volume is, is a lot lesser e-mini's volume is a lot lesser um whereas during the day you know you might want to have have it disabled but for markets that don't have a lot of volatility very low volatility you definitely want to have it enabled. Things like E-minis, it's not going to make a difference whether it's enabled or disabled. Um, NQ, YM, you know, the markets that trade normally, you know, euro currencies, um, crude oil. But if you are trading something like treasuries, you're definitely going to want to have it enabled. So you know, in a tre market like treasuries, you don't get a lot of signals. That's but you know, here's ultra bonds. Take a look at treasuries. Uh, 
I don't know if there's going to be any in there. You know, treasuries is a hard market sometimes to read the order flow because the order flow is so big in the sense that it, it's not going to give you, you know, like here's one. It's a scalper's, you know, it, it's a market, you know, people that trade it basically trade it. The, you know, they come in, they trade 100, 200 contracts to make a half a tick, and then they're done. All right. So uh, 10 years, I, I don't think is a great market for just the retail trader. You know, an interesting market, I think. I mean, obviously you have the ultra bonds, but the five years, uh, you know, it used to be a very nice market to trade. You know, it's got low margin. If you're like at AMP, it's only like a couple hundred bucks. Um, now, you know, not a lot of signals. I mean, there was one there, but you'd just have to go on and adjust the settings, right? I got tight markets on um, balance strength, you know, uh, maybe I'll set it a little bit lower. But it's one of those markets that, you know, when it starts, you know, it, it can have some nice moves when it's, um, you know, when it's moving. You know, the problem is you don't necessarily get a lot of moves anymore in these markets. Yeah, not much on, on the, that's on the one minute chart. But if you were to expand it, say a two minute chart, um, it might look a little bit different. You know, there's a buy, there's a sell. You know, here was a nice buy on that move. Um, you know, here's a nice little sell here, nice little sell there. This one did nothing. You know, and some movements overnight. Oh, even a five-minute chart. Right, this is the five years. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, here's the sell here. Here's the buy. Here's the sell. You're starting to see some more signals. You know, when you start expanding the the time out on a chart or on a market that trades. Um, you know, generally pretty quiet, but that one, again, I had set the, this balance strength pretty low. All right. So let me just, uh, go back to sort of a normal, another market. Uh, this one, I see my ultra bond charts. So let me just go back to ultra bonds, but let's go back to a one minute chart. The balance equality is. right here balance equality it's enabled and basically what the balance equality setting is is looking for it's looking for equal balance minimum in the bar there's going to be times you know generally you're going to want to have an imbalance in the bar um, either buying or selling but there are times where it comes literally equal okay and is it coincidence you know because you, know, you could be talking about the difference of one or two you know a contract basically which is you know one trade um, and you know, when you're dealing with certain types of bars, you know, especially time-based charts, you know, the market just closes, boom, right on that time. So it's, it could just be, end up at equal for whatever reason. Okay. So that's why we have it. You know, if I was using something like a range-based chart, I'd, I'd probably disable it, but it's just safer to have it on, um, completely. You don't need to disable it because honestly, it's not going to make that big a difference in, in most markets. Um, but it's just one of those things that we found where, you know, where it just comes in, where it comes in equal, you sort of, you got to make a decision, right? Where the, the balance is equal and you're like, well, cause you know, when you're programming, right, you got to have it, it's either got to be above a number, you know, zero has got to be a positive or it's got to be negative. But what happens if it falls on zero, right? Do you want to take those? I want to take those. But again, that's the option if you don't want to take them okay so this is my ultra bond chart all right and you know you can see those signals but let's take a look at um you know some other markets because you know in the user guide i, I give you guys some settings right but not all markets you know you're probably going to want to use the exact same settings so we'll we'll first start with well this is gold okay um and I'll just sort of, you know, go through, you know, why you'd want to use certain settings. Now, this is one is set at two and two, okay, which, you know, is, is the mid range, right? And for most markets, it's generally going to be, um, you know, pretty decent, right? You can see some nice moves here in the morning, um, you know, the moves down, the sharp moves down, right? That's what flow driver really is trying to look for, starting to look for those moves 
sharp moves right before they happen. Okay. Now there's going to be times where it sort of sputters, like you have, you know, here in the middle, right, right here, right. You, but really, Flow's driver is designed to catch those big sharp drops or or rallies, you know, when they're about to occur, right here, the big sharp drop, right, the big sharp drops here, right, boom. And this is a setting of two and two, right? Now we all want to have trades where you know you sell it and it drops, and then you buy it and it just rallies, you know, back up. You know, the V-shape moves. But the market doesn't move that way, right? The, the sharp drops don't always occur as frequently as we like, right? Sometimes you're going to get stuck. You know, you're going to get some sideways activity here. Um, you know, sideways activity comes before sharp moves. Okay. Now this is a setting of, of two and two. Okay, now again, that's the average. If you were to take a look at E minis, let's take a look here. Now, E minis is you know kind of a unique market in the sense that there's a lot of different trading going on. You know, when you're trading a commodity market, things are different than when you're trading a you know a, a commodity market is different than trading something that's cash settled like e-minis where you got a lot of retail activity you got a lot of institutional activity you got a lot of hedging activity you really got you know this big mix so what I do you know whenever I come to a new market right I always say, okay I want to see how it's going to work I basically set these almost as, as low as I can go you know one and zero but I want to keep the strength on or sorry the strength is one and the balance I keep to one and yeah that's where I start at I start at one and one strength of one balance of one and you know that that's where I start and that's where I go from right if if I think that you know one is giving me too many signals be, meaning that it's set too low then I'll change it to two right or I'll change it to three two being the average will work for most markets um, three you know is the highest right the highest I would use on, on more volatile markets so here's one and one um, you know is it good I don't know it's okay you know right now cash opened and it's a lot of back and forth here basically between 53 and 58 but you know when you take a look at what happened overnight okay got a little move here then you got this nice move from 42 you know basically all the way up to 50s 52 that's a 10 point move in the S&P's there um, you know, again here in the evening, nice little move up. You know, got that sharp move down, got this little move up yesterday. This uh, that's the 23rd. You know, it caught this nice move down. This move didn't happen. You know, I know there are people that are going to watch my video and they'll say, "Well, you had a losing trade here. You had a losing trade here." Okay. Well, you know, that's trading. That's why you use stops, right? Because you're looking for a move to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you get stopped out, you wait for the next trade, right? They don't mention anything about this this move from 39 all the way up to 44, and then from 44 back down to 39, 37, right? That's 10 points right there. But, but they're, they're, they're stuck on this losing trade, okay? You, you lose your point, your point and a half, two points. But you just made five points here, five points there. You know, you made something here. You made something here. Right now, not every trade is going to give you five points. You know, it depends on the type of trader you are. Right, you, you you've got to decide what type of trader you are. And that's why, you know, I'm I'm always a bit hesitant on giving settings out to people because I don't know what type of trader you are. You know, you you can be a scalper. You could be more of someone that wants to hold it for an hour or two or hold it all day. So it really depends. All right, so that's one in one. You know, that's kind of what I even though I just said I don't want to really recommend settings for markets. You know. One in one, I find is is pretty decent, pretty good for e minis. Now let's take a look at you know another uh, market uh, mini Dow, right? Stay on, stay on the stock side of it, okay? Now mini Dow is not as volatile as Nasdaq, but it has some volatility, okay? So this is the same settings, one and one, okay? I mean it, it looks okay. You know, at, at first glance, but for a lot of people, there's, there's a lot of trades happening, right? You, know, you might not be interested in it. And depending on the time of day you trade, you know, it might not be you know, good for you, right? 
Some people I know like to have a lot of trades because they're just looking to scalp, 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 scalp this move up, scalp this move down. Um, so now in a market that's a little bit more volatile, right? I said you're going to want to have a slightly higher strength, right? So you can, you know, go up to two there, you know, go up to two. But let's make it three, right? Let's make it the max, all right? Three and two. Max on balance strength, balance. So just keep it average. Click apply, click OK. And you're going to see it, it's going to give you bus signals, okay, which is fine, right? It's not that you want to be, uh, you know, catching signals, you know, left and right. So here's a bit stronger and it's a bit cleaner, right? Look at that. It's a bit cleaner now, right? Less signals, right? But the signals that you're getting are better. I don't say better, but, you know, you, you've filtered out a lot of the weaker, you know, the paper hand signals, if, if you know. To use a, a phrase you know, people say well you got short here then the market rallied okay you know you, you got to have a stop right you know you're trading right ahead of cash open you know could be a flood of orders coming in which happened and the market rallied so that's why i am right now gold and silver right i showed you gold let's take a look at silver um since we're talking about commodities silver um now, okay, so this is this, the settings that I just had left over from the mini DAO, right? And, you know, it, it's okay. You know, it's not bad. You know, it's catching this, this nice move down here from 26.12 all the way down to, you know, 25.80, 90 right in here. Um, that, that's kind of a strong signal, 3 and 2, right? You know, commodities, I like to start out at two and two, right? When it's a, it's a market I'm coming into, um, you know, I always want to start here. And it's, it's, you know, it's very similar. You know, you catch that nice jump up, that nice move down there. Um, you know, in the evening session here, when JP Morgan is manipulating the silver markets, um, you know, it, you, you want to catch those moves. You know, it's funny, you know, because I, I worked at JP Morgan and, Sometimes I get these emails from people saying, accusing me of market manipulation, which is just utter nonsense. Just because you know, I worked at J.P. Morgan, I'm, I'm sure they probably, if they found somebody that worked in the uh, in cleaning the toilets, they would attack them for manipulating the silver market. It's uh, it's ridiculous. I even, you know, my, my buddies and I that I used to work with there at J.P. Morgan, we 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 joke about it because you know was there manipulation i don't know you know that that's a completely different trading department than than where i was i was in futures you know the guys on the bullion desk um you know set on the opposite side of the trade of the floor not just you know not like of the room but on the opposite side of the floor so imagine you know a big building i'm on the the east side sorry i was on the west side they're on the east side no interaction with them at all whatsoever um and obviously a lot of the stuff happens out of london anyway and i was in singapore but anyway you can see you know you want to catch those big moves right it's, it's looking for those pops sometimes the pops happen sometimes they don't so this is two and two okay setting of two and two and that's why I'm using gold and, and and silver now crude oil uh crude crude oil and crude oil it, the way i would describe it the way it trades it's, it's a bit like e-minis um you, know, you get a lot of the same players but to a lesser degree um it, it, it feels like and these up to 73 bucks now this is with two and two okay there's nothing wrong with two and two two and two is the average right and that's a good starting point for a lot of people but you know i do suggest um if you're coming into a new market you know that you may not have been trading for a long time start with one and one and go from there one and one is what i recommend for e-minis and you know crude i find it's got similar movement to e-mini so you know the settings i would start with is, is one and one to see how how it performs you know one and one is giving me a lot of signals um so i don't know you know one and one or two and two 
but um, there's nothing wrong with one and one. You know, I was catching some nice moves the day before. You know, it catches this nice move from 73.60, you know, down to 30, um, then back up from 05, back up into, you know, the 20s. There's, there's nice moves to be had in these markets, right? And Flow's driver really is designed to sort of capture those those moves, you know, before they start. Um, because there, there are signs in the order flow before it's going to happen, before it, you know, actually happens. So let's take a look at, or let's go back to a footprint chart, soybeans. Now, soybeans have been pretty active the last uh, couple of days, a lot of price movements and such. Um, this is soybeans right now. What do I got on the flows driver here? Now, um, two and zero. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about, like if you're using a, a footprint chart, you can even do it on a, on a normal bar chart. Under the visuals, right, you have how, you know, where things are going to appear. But this one, signal box width right here is basically going to draw out the zone for you. Okay, so set it to five. And, and you know, if you're familiar with some of my earlier indicators, you know, what the zone is, it's this right here, right? It's drawing out the zone telling you, you know, this is the area you should be getting short because you got a signal coming in here, right? You know, here's the buys right here as this market is coming up. Now, you, you, the opacity is kind of light. It's set to 20, I think, or this one's probably set to five. So it's a little hard to see if you look under, yeah, opacity is fine. You know, you can set it higher to 50. You don't want to set it to 100 because then it would just be too bright. But 50 is, is strong, so you can see you know, and you're going to use these as your, your basically your stop level, right? If you're getting long, you've got the signal and you're getting long. If you start trading into here, you got to worry. If you get on the other side, you should get out, right? That's where I, I know where to place my stop. It's on the other side of these zones. But on this, the indicator, it is um, set to zero, so they're not appearing. But, you know, you should, you know, plug them in. I mean, this is a nice move here from a you know, nice short from 72 all the way down into, you know, the six. Oh, got all the way down to 62 um, then it rallied back up from 67 you know all the way back up to 77 up to 80s right now it's coming back down it's giving you some sell signals here okay so and that is with the setting of two and zero right you don't have to use two and zero two and one you know, is, is, is a setting that I like to use for grains as well. It's going to give you a lot of the same signals here. You know, so there's a lot of nice activity to be had in the grain markets there. Now, the other thing I want to talk about really quick is the trade entry signal. People ask me, what is this trade entry signal? Do I need to use it or not? I use it. And what it does is it, when it's enabled, right, you can see, two and two right trade price level and ticks trade validity and bars is two so basically what that means is for a signal to occur for an actual trade to be valid the market has to move two ticks in the direction of the trade over the next two bars so you can see here right you got the zones drawn out so the bar the conditions in this bar and this bar are met to get short but there's no follow-through order flow that's why you don't see the red um, triangle like you see up here okay now if I have trade entry signal turned off let me just turn it off here it will give you the red triangle okay telling you take the trade now the reason I have this is because on some indicators like um, I'm sorry not some indicators on some tools like markers right if we were trying to automate it you know, you, you want to take the trade when conditions are met so you can see get short, get short. But you don't want to get short here, right? Because the market didn't sell off any further. You want it here where the market's sold off, okay? Now, with the, again, you don't have to use two and two. You could use the market's got to move one tick in the next one bar, right? Or it's got to move um, one, two ticks over the next five bars. It really depends on how you want to use it. I use two and two. And you'll notice, right, see here? up here the triangle is above the signal bar just as here you got a buy signal right if it's enabled you're not going to get 
the buy signal here. You have your sell signal here because it's coming on the bar where the order flow came in to confirm it, right? This is your bar that says, hey, you know what? The driver is in effect here. And then the follow-up order flow comes in. This is where you're getting short as soon as it appears. Just as you have no sell signal here, no sell signal here. So it kept you out of this losing trade, this losing trade, this losing trade, got you in on this trade, got you in on this trade, got you in on that trade. Now people will say, do I... You know, like, well, why, why are you giving up? You know, you know the market is bullish here. Why don't you just get long? Well, you still need that follow-through order flow, right? You still need that buying if you're getting long to come in after you bought, right? You don't want to get short here, and then it's just buying comes in, right? You don't want that. You want to get short like here and have selling come in, right? So that's where you're getting short here, even though it's, you know, in this case, one bar after the bar where everything signals. So, you know, that's basically the flows driver, you know, on, on how to use it. I, I don't want to get into, you know, settings. You know, I, I really want you to, you know, for particular markets, I want you to learn your market, right? So you understand how to trade your market and, and what works best for you. I'll give you a framework and you go from there. If you want to use it, fine, you know, but at the same time, Every market is different and every trader is different. We all got different risk levels, risk parameters. We don't all trade, um, you know, with, with the same amount of risk. You know, some people, the market goes four ticks against them, they're panicking. Whereas other people, the market goes 10 ticks against them, they're, they're fine, they're not no sweat, you know. So it really depends on how many signals you want to get, um, you know, and how volatile your market is. So, you know, on that note, we'll end this training so I hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, any questions on the flows driver, um, just shoot me an email. Okay. So thanks everyone. And bye-bye.